place is hell. That is toxic. I go to my screaming five-year-old. I feel like it's extremely overrated. It's the worst place to hang out ever. There's like the horny server, the really annoying kid server. It's it, it's scary place. We were there half an hour ago, bro. What are you talking about? Bruh. Ah, the black cat. I've met a lot of very fun people. Black Cat is actually a fun place, to be honest. The most popular yet controversial place in the virtual universe. Love it or hate it, it sits as the most favorited world in VR chat alongside a whopping 50 million visits. Wow. If you've ever gone as far as to even open up VR chat, you've probably seen it sitting at the top of the active worlds list for multiple years now. But what makes this world stand out from the others as the number one place to hang out? And how is it possible that the number one world is also the number one most trashed as the worst place to go in the game, especially as a new player? I'm here to dive into the story behind VRChat's most popular world and what to expect in our virtual future from evaluating it. This is The Black Cat. <laughs> So let's travel back in time to June 2019, a major transitioning point for VRChat as the original Quest and Rift S had only just come out a month before. And the Uganda Knuckles meme was finally dying out after blasting VRChat memes into widespread popularity all over the internet. This is when the black cat was uploaded to VRChat by a user known as Spooky Ghost Boo. At this point, the most popular worlds were ones such as the Great Pug, Gaia Knight, and Lag Free Box. All of these and more having their own phase of circling the spotlight as the most consistently poppin' places to go make friends and hang out. Some of these worlds just don't even exist anymore, and others just fell off the map, no pun intended, but when this world was uploaded, it was an instant success. Uh, the thing that I think brought people in and kept them in to begin with is the layout of the world. And yeah, it has been kind of popular ever since, like, the second I made it. Something about Black Cat really resonated with people at that time, and there's key factors that contribute to this. The sleek design is pleasing, the colors feel warm and comfortable, and the key areas are naturally arranged in a way that brings a natural flow to the world. The layout itself feels like a natural parallel to one of the other most successful worlds by pulling inspiration from the essential elements that make it so appealing. I think when I started playing VR chat, it was a lot more adults. Um, seeing a VR user was, you know, almost like, I would say maybe from my experience, maybe one in 20. And everybody was always like, bow down, worship, you have VR. At the height of the Great Pug and the height of the Black Cat had pretty similar vibes despite it being Quest or PC. The, honestly, the direct inspiration for this world was the Great Pug. It was like the main popular worlds that were like the inspiration for all my stuff. And a lot of people compare this to the Great Pug. It's got the same vibe, I guess. But despite the similar vibes, similar popularity, and similar crowd of people being attracted to both, Black Cat implemented something that the Great Pug didn't. The key factor in making it shoot to the top, which has made it double the number of both visits and favorites of the Great Pug over time, quest compatibility. The original quest was priced at only $3.99 compared to the much more expensive Rift and Vive that had launched three years prior for $5.99 and $7.99 respectively. This was a big difference in accessibility in relation to consumers' finances, and as well as the technology itself just getting better. All of this matched with the fact that for the very first time, anyone could go to the store and buy a VR headset that worked completely by itself without a computer. And I think you know Know where I'm going with this one. Yes, a growing influx of VR users meant that VRChat's user count started to continually rise alongside it. And the kicker being that anyone can download VRChat on the Quest 4 completely free with their limited compatibility for the standalone option. As I'm sure you know, the Quest and Quest 2 run mobile Android hardware and just don't have the power behind them to run the same levels of world and avatar optimization that a PC can. Meaning a Quest player is only able to join specific worlds that compromise for this limitation. And the Black Cat is quest compatible, the Great Pug is not. Easy difference. But the general spite against Black Cat did not fully manifest itself until we fast forward a year to October 2020 with the release of the Quest 2. 
The successor to the original Quest headset not only improved the specs themselves, but also dropped the price to a measly $300. Just as affordable as a Nintendo Switch. Oh no! And with this happening right before the holiday season, well, you can imagine what happened next. Christmas. And with it, the birth of the Questies. Oh boy, the Questies. Up until this point, VR was something that was only really affordable to those with working jobs, so primarily adults. But now, little Timmy was asking for a VR headset for Christmas so that he could play Beat Saber. But what mommy and daddy didn't realize is that when Timmy downloaded VR Chat, a free game that they didn't have to pay for, he was going to be dropped into the deep end of the physical manifestation of the internet itself. And this is when the hate really, truly began. VR chat's always been a big mix of different types of people from all different walks of life. You've got bad, you've got good, you've got the gross, you've got the great. But what happens when you dump all of them into a social application they've never played before? Well, likely they're gonna click on the most popular world that's right at the top. When you join a public lobby, it's like rolling the dice. You might end up meeting your best friend you've never even met. Or you might end up meeting someone who yells racial slurs in your face. And this is more prominent here than anywhere else. If you remember the string of clips I used to open up this video with, and those were totally candid takes I did of completely random strangers, by the way, all I asked was, what do you think of the black cat? And the most common answers I got were complaints about the kids, the racists, the crasher groups, the trolls, and the hyper-exaggerated chaos of this one particular spot. But the funny part about all of it is, most of them were in the black cat. If a black cat is that bad, then why are you here right now? I'm here for the crackhead energy. And I kind of get it, there's something incredibly entertaining about watching the chaos unfold. Yeah, you're probably gonna hear slurs, and you're probably gonna see some messed up things, but that's not necessarily all that different from the internet. And VR chat is an extension of the internet, with the added factor of presence. Listen, when you're in VR, you're in it. You're immersed in a way that tricks your brain into thinking that the world and people around you are actually there, which is kind of the whole point. People are gonna hide behind anonymity to be annoying, say bad things, and you're gonna be there for it. But at the same time, VR chat gives people a way to express themselves in a way they've never been able to before. I know I said the most common answers I got to my question were complaints, but most people followed up by saying, but I met my friends there. And, but I met my friends there is a really beautiful thing. Just like I kinda did in this video, a lot of people really blow their distaste for Black Cat out of proportion. It's not the world itself that has any innate problem. The world is awesome and Spooky Ghost Boo now sells their VR spaces online full time, which is a crazy testament to their own abilities. But a lot of people, me included, advise people to stay away from the Black Cat for your first VR chat experience. I still stand by that, and especially now with the new groups update, there's really great ways to get connected with friends and and explore VR chat. But at the same time, I really appreciate what Black Cat is. It's not just a world, it's a mirror of VR chat itself and its culture. So don't be scared, but do be mindful that anything that can happen on the internet can and will happen in a virtual space too. So just think about the way you navigate the internet now and how you found this video. I promise if you take the time to do the same thing in VR chat, you'll also fall in love with stuff you never knew was possible before. Normally everything's not decked out in holiday decoration, but I kind of had to roll with it, so I guess it's the TVRS Christmas special. Thrill and I just had a giant Christmas rave at the TVRS studio, so if you want to attend our future monthly events, then check out the Discord. Like and comment for the algorithm, and subscribe for more content just like this. If you want to support me making more videos, then of course check out my Patreon. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I've been your host, Fia, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Can you tell me, using your piano voice, what do you think about the black cat world? <laughs>Special thanks to this month's Patreon members and virtual VIPs, Clarity, Connor Terrell, Dutchman101, GS Genesis, Izuna Moon, James Bonds Cool, Jean Felix Monin, Kai Mies, Kaze Ryu, MGR117, In and In, Neoplasm Nasarate, Nayer Penny, Rai 6000 Score Maller Snake Eight Head, Cerneth, Third Eye, and Sally.